he's kind of up and down, high and low with Kyrie emotionally. And that could be maybe not the best personality for a leader. Um, and Kemba is consistent. And when Kyrie says, yeah, everyone's up and down emotionally, he's not wrong. It's not, not everyone's a leader. It's a rare thing, in fact. But Kemba seems to have that rare leadership quality. And what it means, Stephen A., is the, the team, the younger players, are able to grow because there's not one guy sucking all the oxygen out of the room. And now, all of a sudden, you look at the team. Stephen A., the ball's moving. They seem to be having more fun. Like, he's putting on a show in Brooklyn. Love watching Kyrie play. But that has unequivocally been the influence so far. You drop Kyrie into the mix, the team does worse, you take him out, this team, the Celtics team, does better. So you're saying leadership and chemistry? No doubt. I think Max is so flagrantly wrong here that it's insulting um, because I think you're being incredibly unfair to Kyrie Irving because those guys were compromised because of Gordon Haywood. So we fast forward to this year. Kemba Walker, without question, the quintessential replacement to Kyrie because he's almost like a poor version of Kyrie, but not that poor at all because Kemba's a bad brother. What happens? We got Jalen Brown right here shooting 52% from the field and averaging 20 a game. We have Jason Tatum, although shooting 39%. Do you realize that Gordon Hayward, before he went down with this hand, was shooting 55% from the field? If that Gordon Haywood was there last year, how good would Boston Wait, have been? Why do you think everyone's shooting well from the field? Like, you have to look at the, all the evidence. Gordon Kyrie Haywood gets, was hurt, Max. I understand, but everyone's shooting better now because the ball is moving more, because they like playing with each other, because they have a leader with, who's even-keeled, who's approachable, who's encouraging. Stephen A., look what happened when Kyrie got hurt a couple years ago. The Celtics went on a playoff run. They improved. Then he came back the following season. They got worse. Now he's gone. They've gotten better again. You, Hayward is what not were they the doing variable before the playoff you can run? isolate. Huh? What were they doing before the playoff run the year they, Kyrie Irving got hurt? Before they, were they got they to got the playoffs, they were him, bowling though. at that time, too. But they, but they got better they were with First, I'm going to start off with the Portland Trail Blazers, number one, and then number two, I'm going to talk about Kyrie Irving and the blast he is getting from the media from Jackie McMullen, Rachel Nichols, and Paul. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> the truth appears. <laughs> All right, starting off with number one, the Portland Trail Blazers. So, I'm concerned about Damian Lillard and the Portland Trail Blazers uh, simply because when you look at their team, they're having an issue with defending. They've allowed 100 points in every single game but one game this season. And if you look at their team, they lost, what was it? Al Farouk Aminu. They've lost Mo Harkless. Uh, right now, Nurkic is dealing with, the, with his fibula injury. They have Hassan Whiteside out with injury. Uh, so they have their bigs out. And it's kind of become the Damon CJ show once again, where it's like they're scoring, but they can't stop anybody. Now, it's a long season, and hopefully the Blazers can get it together. Hopefully their guys can come back healthy to be able to help them. But I just think that defensively, they are missing they're missing those key pieces. And I just don't think that um, they have pretty much played the same way, and it's like really concerning me. And I know that Damon, CJ said that they don't want to join a super team, but you got to keep asking yourself, at what point, at what point, so you start looking at yourself and you're basically saying, well, if you want to win, and I understand, I respect Dane for wanting to do it on one city. I respect that. But you got to look at Portland and keep asking yourself, like, yo, what is this team doing that for some reason they just can't? They lost key players. You know, just like how the Houston Rockets lost their key defensive pieces that helped them. Remember, Luke Bamute. And Trevor Ariza that helped the Rockets become one of the stellar defensive teams in the league, 65 wins. You know, one game away from going to the NBA Finals, you know, even though Chris Paul fortunately got injured. Those key pieces, man, go a long way, I'm telling you. So, yeah, I'm very, very concerned about the Blazers, man. And it's, um, I don't like, I don't like the fact that um, they, they've struggled this season. And the thing is, then I, I fear that Damon CJ might get hurt because of the scoring load that they're going to have to do. And even though they've been known to carry the scoring load, it's like now they're going to have to do even more.
because they don't have enough bodies. And then they have to not only try to play defense because their defense hasn't been great that le- this year, but then also have to obviously try to score and then put the points and then it falls up on them again. You know, and then it, ca- it just becomes them too. And then it's like, what happens to everybody else? You know, and they also lost Miles Leonard, right? Who was, you know, who can help them, you know, shoot, stretch the floor. And that, that's another issue for the Blazers too. I don't, I don't feel like, I don't know what's going to be of their team. And that's why you got to understand that down the line, if they don't make some moves to try to put some help to try to pressure off CJ, and obviously they got to get their injured players back. Orland, once again, I don't think is going to go far, even though they had a breakthrough last year and went to the Western Conference Finals. This might be an earlier round exit. It might be first round, we don't know. So, you know, that's my take on the Portland Trailblazers. So, going on to Kyrie Irving. So, the Brooklyn Nets have struggled this season, ladies and gentlemen. They are, what, 4-6? and six? Or 4-7, and seven, I think. And Rachel Nichols and Jackie McMullen decided, and Paul Pierce all decided to blast Kyrie. Paul Pierce is bitter at Kyrie because the Celtics are off to a 9-1 start, best record in the NBA, and Kyrie's Nets are struggling. And when he was a Boston Celtic, remember Paul Pierce made that guarantee against the Milwaukee Bucks after game one, and they lost four straight after that. And he's now throwing smoke at Kyrie because he's basically saying that Kyrie is not a true leader, and he's also saying that Kyrie Irving is the reason that the Boston Celtics didn't get to where they needed to go, to be, needed to go. And I'm telling you that as much as I blame Kyrie, it was more than Kyrie. If Paul Pierce would actually really do his homework. Um, so yeah, Kyrie is obviously supposed, supposed to be the leader, but it was, I told you it was just not all on him. So we can't just criticize him that fairly. And then you have McMullen and Rachel Nichols, two LeBron, two LeBron groupies. They're pissed off because this guy left LeBron James and they're looking at Kyrie Irving and it's like, oh, well, Kyrie Irving is having the Kobe season. So he's trying to be the Kobe system and get his stuff out the way where he's just jacking up shots to try to say that, you know, I'm a great player and I'm a great leader and I'm a great, unbelievable scorer. This is why idolatry and worship is not worth it at all. Because you get biased clowns on TV spitting out propaganda on these players like let Kyrie Irving try to figure it out with the Brooklyn Nets and remember this is a trying year Kevin Durant is not there and they're gonna say that Kyrie's gonna get fake love now he's gonna get fake love when Kevin Durant comes back because remember KD was the one remember he was the one that had called the media toxic And he's gonna take the pressure off of the media once he comes, uh, I'm saying off the media, off of Kyrie when he comes back. So, what are we talking about here? And that's just so that you know, too many fans, too many fanboys in the media, man. Too many Cowboys, not enough Indians. They all try to be Cowboys. And that's why I say that these guys are really, really, really ridiculous out here on these networks. Because all they wanna just do is just, they wanna talk their crap because they're, they don't do things that their favorite player does. And you're supposed to be part of the, you're supposed to be part of the legacy of this player to make sure that he is an all time great and that we can cement the ghost status so we can push narratives out that he's better than the greatest of all time. It's people like these guys and it's people like Nick Wright who continue to omit facts every single day on TV because look what the media is doing now. They're making it Kawhi versus LeBron. Why? Because they're both in LA. So now the Lakers are going to dominate the story because of what Kawhi did, what he did. And because of what LeBron did, what he did, it's now Kawhi versus Braun. It's player versus player on two teams. And remember, Kawhi is with Paul George, who plays tonight, and Anthony Davis, who was with LeBron, who are both Lakers. Because that's the juicy, that's the meat and potatoes of the story. That's what all we care about. There's 30 teams in the NBA, but it really doesn't matter because we're trying to push two teams, Lakers Clippers. Lakers Clippers. Because it's about the two small forwards in the NBA, LeBron James against Kawhi Leonard. And then you have Jackie McMullen, and then you have Rachel Nichols, and then you have Paul. Oh, that's easy. The truth, Pierce. Do people forget this the same dude that played with Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen? Remember? 
And how, mu how many championships were they only able to get? They were only able to get one. Now, they possibly could have won 2010, and they and what derailed them in 2009 was the Garnett knee injury. That changed everything for them because they probably would have been in the finals maybe three years straight. And I'm telling you, they probably would have did that back in from 08 to 010. So like I said, I'll, I'm, I give Kyrie smoke and I give him you know, blame, but it's like at the same time, you can't do that though. Like they're getting on this dude for no reason. It's like, y'all all still holding grudges. Paul Pierce still holding a grudge. It's like, yo, your Celtics are nine and one. Move the F on, bro. Rachel Nichols and Jackie McMullen. LeBron, uh, Kyrie left LeBron, move on. You see, the thing is, I understand that Kyrie wanted his own team, but people need to stop acting like, if LeBron is all innocent in this and talking about, oh, he wanted Kyrie, that's not even true. This dude tried to get him traded. There's multiple reports, multiple reports on this dude trying to get this dude traded. There's multiple reports on that. And you honestly don't believe me? Like I said, Google it up, search it up. Because I'm not even going to get into that story. But your boy Lewis back with another one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments as always. Live, laugh, love. Thank you for watching the video. Appreciate it subscribe hit the note make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you share the content and once again make sure you comment down below appreciate it